What's up, you skinny motherfuckers? Today, I'm gonna to give you five tips for getting bigger biceps. So if you got small arms, stick around and watch this. How do you grow taller? Give me one tip. Growth hormone and Incrolex. That's what it's called, right? Incrolex? What about a stool? This is, uh, this is just for the video to make it seem like I'm more dominant. But right <laughs> now, right now I'm gonna show you guys five tips to get bigger biceps. So if you have trouble growing arms, um, you know, I got you guys. We're gonna go through them right now. I'm gonna show you how to get fucking massive arms. Don't expect to get a peak because you can't do that. We've gone over that. It's not possible. It's not happening if you don't have the genetics. But we're gonna start off with the number tip number one, and that's gonna be training your brachialis. Okay, so tip number one is gonna be training your brachialis. That's gonna be the middle part of your arm here. It's gonna be like that thick part. Um, a lot of people neglect this. They, I don't know why, but this is what's gonna push your bicep out. It's gonna make your arms thicker. It's an elbow flexor. It's much stronger than you know your bicep itself. And the way that you can train these is you know by having a pronated grip or a neutral grip, opposed to having a supinated grip. Um, so that would be hammer curls or reverse curls mainly. Um, those are pretty much your two main movements you're going to be using for working your brachialis. And I pretty much find these to be a staple anytime we're training biceps. So um, if you're not doing these, I would be incorporating these every time you train biceps. And this will ultimately give you just much thicker arms and push your bicep up more. So one thing with hammer curls is you see a lot of excessively heavy because it's a lot easier to go heavier on uh, hammer curls than it is with a standard, you know, alternating dumbbell curl with a supinated grip. You know, people can just try to load them up and they start, you know, swinging their arms and shrugging back and forth. Um, you don't want to do that. Obviously, with any movement, we still want to be executing with intent, controlling, squeeze. You want to start here. You want to come across your body slightly. You want to hold this squeeze for a brief second, come back down, have a full stretch as with any bicep movement. Well, reverse curls are something that you're not gonna be very strong in naturally. Um, so you're gonna have to drop your ego and go a bit lighter here. Um, you do not wanna be to the point where your arms are just coming up and you're creating, you know, uh, turning into more of like a, like a shoulder shrug, bro type of motion. A lot of people, you'll see a lot of people that start doing like this. They'll start coming up, trying to drag their elbows up with it. You don't wanna do that. You still wanna be maintained and controlled, you know, moving it with your brachialis. This is gonna be great for your forearms as well. All right, so tip number two is gonna to be to make sure you're training your bicep in the fully shortened position, the mid-range, and the fully length position. So an example for a fully shortened position would be a preacher curl um, or something like a concentration curl. This is where you're gonna feel uh, the best contraction when you have that like crazy squeeze in your bicep. And you also wanna start with the shortened position first going into your workouts because your, your biceps are weakest in the shortened position. Um, so that's why I like to preferably start my bicep training with a preacher curl usually. Okay, so when you're doing a preacher curl, um, specifically preacher curls, you wanna make sure that your arm is fully pressed down against the pad and kind of imagine you're trying to lift your elbow up as you come up to contract to fully shorten the bicep and get that peak contraction. You'll see a lot of people, they start digging their elbows into the padding and you know their shoulder will start to raise up and they're just doing that to you know try to get a better, better leverage to move the weight up. It's not the goal here. Again, execute with intent. Another thing is when doing preacher curls, I personally like doing them unilaterally better than doing bilaterally. So that means just doing one arm at a time. I just feel like I have better control um, when doing it that way as opposed to doing both arms. At the same time, I just get better execution out of it. Now for training your biceps in the mid range, it's gonna be something where you're pretty much just you know, at a standard angle, your standard dumbbell curl, um, standing straight up, just like this. You know, this is where your biceps are gonna be the strongest. So, like I said, an example of this would be just a standard alternating dumbbell curl, uh, nothing fancy. You could do barbell curls, cable curls, any of those would work. One tip for this is um, as you come up, you can shorten your bicep more, get a better contraction by having some uh, shoulder flexion in there. So you wanna raise your elbow up more and that'll help you get a better contraction, a better squeeze. Um, you know, don't be afraid of involving your shoulders a bit when doing these. I know it's a bicep movement, but you know, your biceps do assist in shoulder flexion with the way that they tie in and everything, you know, it's gonna just shorten the bicep more. Obviously, that's what we want to take it through a bigger range of motion. One thing you want to avoid here is obviously excessive swing. You can have that shoulder flexion, you could come up and get a squeeze at the top, but some people will literally just swing their arm up to get it up there, and at that point, they're not even having tension placed on the bicep, and they're placing it all on the interior delt. You don't want to do that. You only want to lift your arm up as much as you can maintain tension on the bicep and still be controlling it and getting that contraction. And you're swinging it up, and you know, just turning into like a front raise with the bent arm, um, you're just doing something that's ineffective. 
a fully lengthened position. Um, this is going to be something where your arms are kind of like behind you. You know, you have your bicep in that fully stressed position. An incline dumbbell curl is pretty much my go when it comes to this. So you could do this with cables or with dumbbells. And when you're doing this, mess around with the incline. It's going to be, it's going to vary depending on, you know, your body structure. So, you know, having it up one notch or down one notch might be more beneficial and fit better to your structure than somebody else. So mess around with that. You don't. You shouldn't feel shoulder pain when doing this. If you have shoulder pain, you should probably move the bench up one notch. But uh, you know, you don't want to feel like this extreme strain in your shoulders. You want it to be on the bicep, and then you want to focus on you know obviously coming down, getting that full stretch, really emphasizing loading that stretch there, and then as you come up, you know contract your body. Next tip is going to be incorporating intensifiers. I, you guys know I love intensifiers, but I especially love them on training arms because it's easy to fucking do. You know, arms are not very fatiguing. It's not like doing hack squats to failure where, you know, the idea of doing a rest pause set after doing hack squats is like fucking nuts and, you know, just mentally insane. But, you know, doing them on a cable curl is pretty fucking easy and there's no reason to not throw those in. It's fun. You're going to get a crazy pump and it's going to allow you to push past failure, get some more volume in there. And, uh, just get big fucking growth hormone arms. So I'm gonna demonstrate a rest pause set here for one, but what you could do is, you know, drop sets, cluster sets, super sets, you know, these are all forms of intensifiers. So on a rest pause, a rest pause set, what you're gonna do is you're gonna do one set, so you're gonna work up to your top set to failure. So let's say we're shooting for 10, 12 reps, you're gonna work up to whatever weight you're gonna do for those 10, 12 reps, go to absolute failure. And then you're gonna rest for 15 breaths or about 30 seconds and then you're gonna go again to failure. So let's say I did the hundreds for 12 reps. Well, got, I failed, I rest for 15 breaths, 30 seconds. Then I do the hundreds again, I fail for you know seven reps. And then I'm gonna rest again for 15 breaths or 30 seconds, um, and then go for one final attempt to failure for three rounds total. Um, so let's say I had you know, 12, seven, four reps, um, and that'll be a complete rest pause set. 13. Now we're gonna rest. One more round, three rounds total. You could do rest pause sets for more than that. You know, for example, sometimes in a program, all right, you know, this fucking guy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> fucking guys having sex till lunches. Uh, what was I saying? I gotta uh, do this round. I gotta do the whole thing. saying is sometimes in a program I'll write like 25 reps total as many rest pauses as it takes to get there so let's say you know it'll be one working set of you know 15 reps so you'll work up to a top set where you're aiming to fail around 15 reps and then on the second set you might maintain that same load but now you're going to do as many rest pause sets as it takes to get to 25 reps total so you might only get 12 and then you get the rest and maybe you get eight well that's too much let's say you get 10 you just have to keep doing Rest pause sets of five until you get 25 or whatever. Um, so that's one way you could go about it too. The final tip here is that when you're training biceps, one cue you always wanna have, especially when doing dumbbells, but even doing barbells, even though you know you can't turn the barbell, you wanna think pinkies up. So even if you're in a barbell off position, you wanna think of you know, supinating your wrist as much as you can, because what a lot of people will do is they'll, t they'll start to you know, get away from that supination and they'll start to turn their wrist more inwards um, in order to, you know, Get the best contraction you know work the biceps you want to you want to have your pinkies up this is what's going to create you know the best squeeze at the top isolate your biceps the most um and if you don't know that you could literally just do it right now you could feel the difference between going like this and then turning it like this and feeling how much tighter your bicep will get one thing you can do and you want to pay attention to this you see i'm holding the dumbbell here like this you know this is good when you lift it up it's gonna give you that advantage to turn your wrist like this 
when people hold the dumbbell like this at the top, you know, it's a lot harder to do that. So the, you know, the leverage is against you here. You don't want to hold it at the top like this. You'll have it at least in the middle or towards the back more. It's going to be easier to, you know, turn your pinkies up and get a better bicep contraction. Um, Cause again, you don't want to be moving the weight like this. It's not how you want to do it. All right, you fucking noodle arms. I hope you enjoyed that fucking five tips that I just gave you for free. Um, you're welcome. But, you know, you can incorporate these into your workout. If you haven't, you know, get bigger biceps. Everybody wants bigger biceps. I know you always hear these guys say, small arms are aesthetic. Pussies say that. Um, if you don't know, I do have a legs push pull arms ebook. You know, it has great feedback, great reviews. You know, I've always said this, a lot of guys love to train legs push pull. And when you're doing legs push, legs push pull, this is also something that I always preach about this is that arms get neglected a lot in, in legs push pull. And why it's why I don't think it's really that great of a split. You'll see all these kids train legs push pull for years and then they have small arms. And they don't know why, it's because they're doing, you know, two, two sets for biceps at the end of a pull workout and two sets for triceps at the end of a push workout. And they're barely giving their arms any attention. They're pushing it off to the end. So by doing legs push pull arms, you're having, you know, much more attention dedicated to your arms and they're not gonna be a lagging point in years down the road. So you wanna start prioritizing them now so that they don't become a lagging point. Um, and if you wanna get that ebook, it is in the bio. Uh, it's on my website and you can give that a go too if you want. But Besides that, that's all I got for you guys today. Um, if you want to learn anything from Raw and Revive, remember I'm, I'm with them too now. Code, code Seb. Seb. Code Seb to the moon. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Okay, ready? Yeah.